Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at filtering in Lightroom Classic. There are a number of different reasons why you may need to filter your images in Lightroom. For example, you may want to find an image or a set of images that were taken with a specific lens or images that were taken with a specific ISO setting. Or maybe you want to find images that you've sold before or images that need to be edited. Well, you could do that when you filter them in Lightroom. And there's two different ways to filter images in Lightroom. The first way involves the library module, specifically grid view of the library module. And the easiest way to jump into grid view, no matter what module you're in, is just hit the G key on your keyboard and you'll jump into grid view of the library module. Once you're in grid view, you'll notice along the top, there's this library filter bar. If you don't see that, hit the backslash key on your keyboard. The backslash key makes that bar appear and disappear. Along the top of that bar, you'll notice some headings, text, attribute, metadata, and none. Let's start with text. You could search any text field that is searchable in the metadata. When you open up that text heading, you'll notice over here that we have some options. Right now I have it set to any searchable field, or I could be more specific. I just could look for titles or captions or a certain search searchable IPTC data or EXIF data. Let's leave it at any searchable field. And then we could narrow that down over here with this drop down and just contain the word I'm going to search for or contains all the words I'm going to search for and so on. I'll just do contains all and let's just write noise because I know that I put a keyword on images that have high noise that I'm going to use in videos that I'm demonstrating noise reduction like to noise AI and videos such as those. So I put a keyword in the keyword, I'll often put noise. Also, because I'm searching any searchable field, if it's somewhere else, if it's in the caption or if it's in the title, it's going to show up here as well. Now you'll notice, for example, this image, it has the file name and then it has dash denoise AI dash standard. This image was sent to denoise AI and because it was sent to denoise AI, denoise put the noise up here in the file name and it's finding it when I write noise. So you could search for any searchable metadata field through that text attribute at the top here. Now, of course, you have to set this up. You have to be kind of um, good about when you import images or when you're editing images to put keywords in there that you know you may need to search for in the future. I mentioned at the top that you may want to search, for example, images that you sold before. That means if you sold an image in the keyword, you could put a keyword sold or whatever, and then you could search for that keyword and you'll know that it will come up with every image you've ever sold before. So you could do this. You just have to be diligent about um, the metadata, basically more, more commonly putting in keywords. You may often though change the name of the file and in that case you could search for that so if you've sold an image sold an image you may not use a keyword you may want to put in the file name sold or something like that and you'd be able to search for it here now let's get rid of that if you don't want to search for text or don't need to search for text another uh, option you have is an attribute and an attribute is you know your your flag rating so anything that has a flag you click here and you can see they're showing up. Just click on that flag again and it will then turn that flag off and I'm searching just for images. Or I could search for images that are edited. These have edits done to them or that aren't edited. So as I mentioned at the top, if you want to find all the images that need to be edited, you could do that here. You could do star ratings. So let's say just anything that is greater than or equal to one star, I could do that two stars, three stars, and so on. If you want to turn this off, just I'm at four stars now, just click on that four star, fourth star again, it will turn it off. Now you could change this to less than or equal to or equal to. So if I want to just find my one star images, I could do that like that, equal to one star. Click on that star again to turn it off. We have the color labels, so you could search for specific images that are red, yellow, green, and blue, purple, and so on. So if I want to find just purpled or images that have a purple label. I could do that. You can see those are all the purple ones. Uh, next to that, we have custom labels. So you could put like a custom color in there um, when you're 
you know, whatever, for whatever reason, you have a custom, an image with a custom color, you could find those custom colored labeled images there or images that have no color label at all, just unlabeled. Then over here, we have the kind of image. We have an original image, and this could be a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD or a RAW file because what that is designating it against is images that are virtual copies. So you could just have virtual copies only. So there's images that are just virtual copies. You could see the little corners curled up there, again, to turn that off. And then at the end, videos. I don't have any videos in my library at all. So there. if I had videos, that would be that. Now you could combine these. If I want to find all of my, uh, let's say, images, let's change this to equal, equal to greater than or equal to, and let's do one star and have a red label. Oh, don't have any of those. How about yellow? There I have one that is happens to be five stars and has a yellow label. So you could see how you could combine these, but you have to come in and you have to turn them off. So anything that has a pick flag, do I have any reject flags? Probably not. Do I have anything without any flag? Probably. Unflagged photos. So you could come in again, you could combine all these, and this is all when you're searching for attribute. Now let's go over to metadata. Now metadata is kind of cool. You could search for, I mentioned an image that was taken with a specific lens. So what you would do is go up at the top here, and this may vary for yours. At the top you see I have dates, so I could search for specific images taken on a certain date. I could search for images taken with a specific camera. I could take search for images taken with a specific lens or a specific label. Let's start with lens. I had mentioned that before. So, well, let's narrow it down even more. I could combine these, right? So let's go to my Nikon Z7 II. All right. So there's all the images taken with the Nikon Z7 II. Now I want to see all the images taken with the Nikon 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3 lens. And there's the images taken with that lens. So you can see how you can narrow that down. Um, you could change these headings. Let's say I never searched for labels, so I want to get rid of this. We'll click right here, and I could say, oh, uh, I want to search for ISO, so ISO speed. So here's images taken with specific ISO speeds. I want to find images that were taken at the Nikon Z7 II with this specific lens that were shot at ISO 25,600. And there's all those images taken at that high ISO of, uh, I can't Rocky. So you could see how that, you could narrow that down. Now let's say I search for this all the time. Well, I could make a preset for this search. To do that, go down here in the lower right-hand corner. You see right here this drop-down, it's right above the film strip here. Let me make this maybe a little bigger. See this, um, it says custom filter right now. Click on that, then scroll down and save current settings as new preset. And I don't know what to call this because just <laughs> not something I'd really do, but let's just say... Um, I don't know, Z7 two filter. All right, let's just call it that. We'll click create. Now let's come up here and just undo everything. So we have this all, you know, totally undone. As a matter of fact, we'll go up here and just click none. We could go now to this lower right hand corner, go to this drop down, and we could find that um, that filter we just made, Z72 filter, and click on it, and it will automatically apply it. You can see how it applied it here. So you could make filter presets um, with Lightroom. So that's pretty cool. If you don't want that anymore, this isn't a filter I'd really use, right? So I'd go down here and I delete preset Z72 filter, and then I just delete it. So I don't need it anymore. So when you're searching for metadata, you could come up in here and uh, these different headings here, you can make them very specific. You see there's little drop downs here. So if I wasn't ever going to use lens, I could come here and just use specific camera serial numbers. You can see all the different ways you could search uh, for an image or set of images with that. Over to the right of that, there's another drop down and you could add a column to the left, right, or remove this column. So you could have a bunch of columns up here. I usually have the four to search with, but you could search with, you know, you could really narrow this down. You want to find images taken with an ISO of 6,400 with a specific lens, with a specific camera on a specific day. Um, also maybe 
with a specific, um, I don't know, something else. I don't, you could just keep adding it and really narrow it down. And then if it is something you do often, you could make a filter preset for it as I demonstrated. Now, I mentioned that there are two different ways to filter in Lightroom Classic. This first way involved grid view of the library module, but you also could do some searching if you're in, let's say, the develop module. And if you're in the develop module and down here is the filter bar right here, it's right above the film strip. And we touched on that before when I made that filter preset. Now, if you don't see all these different ways to search right here, just click on the word filter. And you can see how when I click on the word filter, it kind of hides it. And then click on filter again and it will bring it out. So I could, here, let's, I don't think I have any tagged images in this folder. Let's go to one I know I do. Um, probably this one, right? Yeah, this one. Okay, so now we have, let's say, just images that have a pick flag. You can see those are the ones with the pick flag. I get images that have no flag, unflagged photos, images that have a reject flag. I don't have any of those. Images that have edits done to them. Images that have no edits done to them. So we could, you could combine these. So uh, then let's say, again, greater than or equal to one star images. We have the colors. Again, we have red, yellow, green, blue, purple. Uh, custom and none. Uh, so all the yellow tagged images and so on. So you could come in and again, you could combine these. So if I want to find all images that are three stars or greater that have a green um, label, but I don't have any. Um, of course, that made that kind of, how about with the pick flag there? We have a couple here. And then if you want to of course, see that we're in the develop module. So you could do this from the develop module. Um, so you could just search this way all through this filter bar right here. And again, you could make a preset here as well. Just go to this drop down and you could create a preset. So there's all different ways you could filter in Lightroom. Now, what I probably should have mentioned at the top is you really have to set up your Lightroom for searching though. I mean, right out of the box, unfortunately. Um, you're just not able to search for some things. Like if you wanted to find images that you've sold before, uh, Lightroom's not going to know you sold them. So you're going to have to give them some type of attribute to designate that that, images, th that image or images were sold. So you have to either give it like a five-star rating, that means it was sold, or maybe a red label means it was sold, or maybe you just wrote in the keyword area of the uh, metadata that it was sold something like that, so that you, uh, Lightroom has that in there, so you're able to search for it. So I probably should have mentioned that at the top, but that is important. But even if you don't do anything at all with your images when you import them, you are able to search for a lot of stuff. You could search for, like, as I showed, the, the camera, the lens, ISO um, settings and stuff like that. You're able to do all that in Lightroom. So that's filtering in Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.